What's up, guys? What's up? What's up? This what's up? is the one man show. This is the man, and this is the one, obviously, the boxer. And uh, this is a very special bonus clip that we are making because uh, we want to be the number one sports. No, we want to be the number one fight sports podcast in Singapore, and it's very important for us to address this issue with what's been going on. Uh, in the news lately, with regards to the Singapore boxing scene, so what mm-hmm. better to talk about the Singapore boxing scene than Singapore's most Gossip King famous fighter, famous ah, uh? Muhammad the Chosen One, Ridwan. So Give yeah, this is from time to time we'll do uh, special editorial pieces like this where one will actually talk about what's going on in Singapore boxing. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and clips we'll like this make us feel like we are important. We are quite important. We are still the number one. Uh, we are the only boxing one. podcast. <laughs> More like the in only Singapore. one. So yeah. yeah, give us credit where credit is due, please. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. So to summarize what's been happening in the news lately, uh, there's been a lot of reports about how the I think how Singapore boxers are, are being treated. Are being treated and how the Singapore Boxing Organization or Association, what is it called? Uh, Sabah, Singapore Amateur Boxing Association. It's not really uh, evolving the way a normal sports body should evolve in Singapore itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, this has been going on for a while now, but it's only made light uh, in the news recently, thanks to, who's the reporter? Um, Sazali, I think. Yeah, Sazali yeah, was the one who so, called me. Uh, big up, Sazali, for bringing this issue to light. Uh, this is something over the years of covering local sports I've witnessed myself. Uh, I'm going to give my point of view. Ridon's going to tell you guys his point of view, which is more important, by the way. Uh, and yeah, I think there's nothing else to dwindle on but to talk about it right now. Uh, athletes are not being treated right. Athletes are leaving the sport athletes are taking a break especially mm-hmm. after sea games and what happened uh this has been happening for a few years i remember when i first met you uh three four years ago and i told you like what's up with the state of singapore boxing mm-hmm. and you tell me that you know structural and organizational wise there is some problems with it yeah there's always been a struggle there and it doesn't seem to go away it's always like catching up on us i think i don't think we're making much of a progress to be honest and i'm quite glad that i left the amateur scene to go into the pro scene yeah i think there's an influx of pro boxes uh in the last three four years we have a lot of national boxes who turn pro mm-hmm. and a lot of pro boxes just going pro right yep for some reason they just do yeah, so where do you, like, to me, in my point of view, the problem seems to come from the top itself. Like, who, the, no, the current person ruling over the Boxing Association of Sing- the Singapore Amateur Boxing Association. What do you think? Where do you think the problem comes from? I think, to be honest and to be fair, I don't know how the 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 communication between the association and Sports Singapore is supposed to be like. So I don't know the discussion behind closed doors, like uh, the amount of money, the budget allocated to the to the sport for overseas training, for overseas competition. But there is always the struggle of finding the boxers to even compete in international tournaments. So I mean, like uh, we have a SEA Games, we had the SEA Games recently. And it's surprising that our boxers had to take out their own money mm. to even go for their own training camp. So I thought that shouldn't have happened. So I'm not going to say that somebody took away the money or something like that. I think that's too deep. Um, but I think we need to have an answer to why they have to sort of self-fund. I think more than half of the team was training here at Legends while they were preparing for the competition. Okay, so that's the first problem. Right now, the article says that there is a set amount of money that is set aside. I think a few hundred thousand, or is it? Yeah, a few hundred thousand. A few hundred thousand dollars was set aside for Sabah, mm-hmm. right? But still, the well, we we only sent four athletes, right? Yep. So and yet those athletes had to fork out money. Yep. 
from their own pocket Danisha Leona obviously mm. uh, who's the other two Chiawe Chiawe and but uh, so out of the four then how many of them medal only one right I think only one yeah okay so where is the money being spent here why do our athletes our hard working athletes have to work on top of train for such a big event like the sea games i mean you've been a part of the sea games team before yeah do you go through the same thing yep sort of i mean to be honest i don't have an answer when it comes to the money situation but i know that um something that could have changed but didn't is the structure for the training program the the competitions that uh, the the athletes can prepare for uh for to prepare them for the sea games it's still like um, nobody knows when's the next competition then the next thing they know hey we're going for the sea games so it's always like a shock like for example when we talk to nazri the other past week see sambo is super new and suddenly they are sending their their fighters to what freaking mongolia yeah but he still had to fork out his own money yeah but still like it happened like now we don't even have a structure to like go somewhere so I think that's the main concern right now. What is the current structure? How many times a week does does the national team get together to train? I think supposedly two times, but so far I think most of them only go once, like every Saturday. So who conducts the training? Mm, the head coach, who is, um, I think David Alexis. Okay. So he's a two-star IBA coach or something. Okay, I have yeah. no idea what then what that yeah, means. So what does that mean? Basically, he's got a he's been uh, he's gone through the test and then he's got uh, a grading by the amateur boxing association international. Okay. Yeah. So that makes him a qualified coach. Have you? That makes him a qualified coach. Uh, do you know his background? Like, is he a fighter before? Or? I mean, he's fought for Singapore in the amateur scene. He's fought pro like once or twice. And um, other than that, I think he's followed us in like overseas competitions, overseas training camps. So I think he's pretty much uh, quite experienced. It's a sort of kind of way, but he's also got a full time job. Okay. Mm, so I think his he, his struggle is to balance the full time job and to also coach the national athletes. Uh, and how many national athletes are there right now? I have no idea. A lot. I think we have a few that trains at the national training ground, but which is where? Um, Bedo Bedo Stadium, I think. Bedo Stadium, okay. Yeah, but now I think only four or five. Basically, those who went to the Sea Games are those carded or recognized by Sport Singapore. Okay, this is uh, to me this is fascinating that you guys are only training twice a week because. Uh, I used to represent Singapore in Silat mm-hmm. and this was 10 years ago maybe uh, so I started a national team when I was 13 all the way until I was maybe 18 mm-hmm. and once you get into the senior team which is 16 and above or whenever you're good enough or you win enough local competitions uh, you go straight to the senior team and the senior team trains every day I had to train every day yep and we had a proper building, the Singapore Silat uh, yeah, Center of Excellence. Thing, yeah, you guys do. Uh, but again, like I said, boxing has been a national supported sport even before Silat did. Mm-hmm. Right? And to hear, like, you guys don't have the infrastructure, not only the physical infrastructure, but it seems like right now, even like the training model yeah is the training aspect is a little bit like a like a little bit in a blur like nobody knows where they belong everybody sort of like still attached to their clubs yeah which is fine i think but to be honest if i were to go in there and make a change i wouldn't know where to start i think it's really hard because i think you have to break some ego some people you have to like fire some people away from the positions to make certain changes to be honest uh, but i think boxing really needs that it's really hard right now. I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, to me, this is just surprising because my background is Silat. Like, Silat's not even an internationally recognized sport as big as boxing is. I'm not mm-hmm. saying Silat mm-hmm. is small. Uh, but I know, like, I was in the B team before I was in the elite team. Like, mm-hmm. even the B team trains almost every day. Yeah, that's a system, you know. Like, uh, in a, in boxing, yeah, I mean, in Singapore context, we don't really know. I mean, who went to SEA Games are considered probably the elite guys. Then there's no B team, there's no development team. Mm. And it's surprising because we always have 
like uh, matches outside which is not organized by the association and there are a lot of participants even NUS recently had a had a fight InterVarsity Games mm. it's got quite a lot of support but when it comes to Sabah events the participation is pretty much quite low so I don't know what went wrong there are the inter-school events like the Varsity Games are uh approved by Sabah is yeah, it a part like of Sabah? Year, so it's, sa- it's sanctioned by yeah, Sabah. It's sanctioned by Sabah. So there's a disconnect here where from my Sila days it's okay you fight for your club and then you go to the local tournaments which is almost I think every year there is a nationals. Mm-hmm. So uh you fight as a junior if you win or you medal in the in the national junior competition you get called up for the national junior team. Okay. Right? National junior team trains maybe once or twice a week because we're young. I think it's mm-hmm. under 16. Uh, and then once you keep on winning and winning and winning, there's a junior elite team which you get to go f- for competitions overseas. Do people g- do get kicked out of the team? No, people don't get kicked out. Uh, like wait. if they lose their nationals or something? Uh, if they lose your nationals the next year, you won't be called up. I don't know. It was how that was how it was. So there's like a formal letter to call you to come for training. Yes, Do you fo- get allowance. You get allowance from uh, the sports council, but it's not a lot. I think it's not a lot. Yeah, that's the thing because we don't even have one. That that's something that I don't understand. Even I'm not asking for hundreds of dollars, but I think that even my footballer friends like they play for Geylang or whatever mm. back then. But hey, I I have to go now because I've got training, and they are so proud of that because the the they training paid every day, yeah, right? They paid for the bus pass and whatever. Yeah, yeah. But boxing, pretty much, uh, there's nothing going on. Yeah, it's I don't know. Like for us, from the junior, and then you get groomed to be a part of the B team, the adult, the senior B team. So the senior B team will go to regional competitions. So we train every day, yep. but we'll go to competitions in Indonesia, competitions to Malaysia, competitions to Thailand. And then when you get good enough, then you get promoted to the elite team. The elite team is where the money is. Right? Okay. How much money are we talking about here? Uh, I think I think you get a monthly salary okay. to an extent because you're already, when you're an elite uh, silat fighter, you're also considered an uh, A-grade athlete. So you don't train at the uh, back at your club where you started your silat. No, you do. You still do. You still do. Well, because that's where you start. So some people are just loyal to the extent where. But then like, I thought you supposed to train every day at the national. Yeah, you train every day, Monday to Friday, at the national training ground. At the national training ground, and then on Saturday and Sunday you help out at your club. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's how we always do it. That's how my club does it. Uh, but so the coaches in the national team do not train. Um, in the the coaches clubs. in the national team are a mixture of coaches of the clubs. Okay. So usually the national team hires the best coaches in Singapore. So say your club is really good, right? Mm. You're a coach. You get called up also to coach the national team, and okay. you get paid. Also, also, it's like a full time job, sort of. Sort of. I think I. Back, more like an allowance back then it was more like an allowance mm-hmm. yeah but the elite team is the one that you know whenever there's international competitions because Sila is quite big in Europe so you get to go to France you get to go to Belgium you get to go to the UK and stuff mm-hmm. like that and so you're training full time because on top of your everyday training you also do strength and conditioning and stuff like that back at the Singapore uh, Sports Association okay yeah so I think Structure wise, it's amazing how a sport like Silat, who are who the article also point out now gets millions of dollars in terms of grants, mm-hmm. ten times more than boxing, has grown so much, and overtook boxing as the in terms of grants. Yeah. Right. Because there's a structure. Maybe that's what boxing needs. Yeah, I think that's what Sport Singapore is looking for. I think uh, for my brief understanding from studying Singapore sports, I think the I think Sports Singapore wants want to see that the local NSAs are doing their jobs in getting the sports into the grassroots levels, how to build up the community rather than just focusing on the elite elite athletes. I think that's where we are. I think that's where we are like lacking. The other thing that I want to point out, uh, which the article also point out is, and I and I've and I've told you this a long time ago. Uh, 
the Sabah president is yeah Mr. Said Kadir I'm going to get a bit personal because I know how much he means to you and how mm. much he kind of like you know help you out during your journey but I think from a few years ago I told you that I don't think he is the right man for the job yes he is the aside from you he is one of Singapore's most known boxer because he won what did he win? he did uh, something he went, he went to the Olympics he went multiple sea games Yes, but how old is he now? I don't know. He's old, right? Yeah. And he deserves to rest really. He just deserves to be on the throne just looking down. Make yeah. sure his soldiers, his generals are doing the job. So from what I know, he is the figurehead and I don't understand what the rest of the organization is, but I think new blood needs to go in and take over to push this sport forward because right now it's just stagnant. And no nothing against yeah of course against yeah. uh Mr. Kare we Mr. all Kare. respect him we everybody him. respects him and we appreciate what he's done for the boxing scene but i just think right now he's at the stage where he doesn't really keep up with what's going on around i understand he has a job on top of being sabah's president i guess so which makes me already questioned his commitment to pushing the sport forward and again I'm going back to my Silat days right Silat was hated by Mr. Sheikh Alauddin one of the most driven men mm-hmm. to ever grace the earth I would say uh, he was full on hands on trying to promote the sport trying to grow the sport Maybe once in a while there's a clash of interest because he has his own Silat club also and mm-hmm. there are questions being raised on, you know... The selection of athletes. The selection of athletes. Is he using the funds for the right thing and stuff like that. But this is whatever, right? Mm-hmm. He has moved the sport to where it is right now, yeah. you know? Uh, he has always been pushing, pushing, hate him or love him. He's always been putting the sport in front even though sometimes it's questionable questionable to certain people. There's always going to be questions. Yeah. There's always going to be questions anywhere. There's always going to be chaos before there's a masterpiece and stuff like that. But, you know, looking back at where Sila is right now and where boxing is, there's a lot of questions to be asked. And I just want to ask you right now, do you feel the way I do? Do you think that he's the right man to guide us into the next century or the next few years and stuff like that or do you think that the problem we have right now is because he's been hongi- holding on for too long I think we still need him to the extent of guiding us because as an advisor I, as an advisor because I think he's the most connected person he's the person that connects us to the rest of the world in terms of uh, the other associations the other, I think he's involved in some of the uh, the politics and, and Aiba it's in the international level I think it's a bit at a rocky stage because I think even the International Olympic Committee is not recognizing them anymore so I think it's a bit off on the rocks so I don't know what's going on there so I think he's battling that part of the boxing journey and we definitely need a younger team to try to market the sport a, younger, the sport, a yeah. younger management team yes to complement his his experience to like get sponsorship get uh, consistent competitions tournaments selections uh, make it more like a so people when they get invited to train in the, with the national team they will feel a bit more proud. appreciated proud uh, yeah I think to go back to it I don't think money is the main thing money is a problem but not the main not the main thing because the thing is we don't know what's going on if we, if we know what's going on we know what's the problem exactly where is the coach where is the athletes um, but from my view we don't have a shortage of athletes we always have boxes it's just a matter of how far are we able to develop them before like we we lose their interest because they have other commitments and stuff like that I mean obviously we cannot pay them a lot of money mm. but I think we if we have a structure we said okay for five, for five years if you commit to this we cannot guarantee you a gold medal but we can guarantee you that there is this path but winning ultimately comes to you I mean, ghost uh, is in your hands. But we don't have that. It's all based on luck. It's ba- all based on, hey, next next year, go see games, we go. Yeah. Well, if you want your 
if you want your athletes to succeed, you got to provide them with the tools. Right now, it seems like Singapore boxing does not even have the tools. Mm, yeah, there's no right? pathway even. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's the problem that I feel like it. I th- I don't think there's any more. I don't know about you, but I don't think from what I see from the article and so how some athletes are stepping away. Mm. from the sport and taking a break it feels like there's no more pride in wearing a Singapore tracksuit or a Singapore you know yeah. boxing shorts or stuff like that because you know when I w- when again going back to what I felt when I when I first got my senior team uh, Sila Attire and it has Singapore on the back it has my name on the collar it was like fucking proud moment mm-hmm. you know what I mean it's like I would wear that everywhere I go if I could but I'll look ridiculous and I didn't maybe I went to the shower with it but that's <laughs> another story for another day uh, do you think there are people who will be willing to join the management team young blood yeah sure I know plenty of I know plenty of guys who are willing to do to do the job but I think their main worry is not to step on anybody's toes and make anybody upset but I think the nature of the job is some people are going to get hurt some people will get a reality check guys I think it's bound to happen it's, it's got to happen for a change to be for change to happen you're in boxing someone is going to get hurt yeah, right I'm not going to do it yet I think because I'm still like competing and all that but if if it was to me I would go and sit down with Coach Kade. I will sit down with the Sports Singapore. Look, what do you want? How can we get the funds? What kind of programs? What of what kind of proposals that you want me to show? Then we will show it. Yeah, I think. Again, you know, there is so many boxing gyms in Singapore. Too many, I guess, to me. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's it's about everybody just coming together, and actually. Working this out. Yeah. Right. Putting the differences aside, because it, this cannot be a one-man show. Is I mean, one-man show is us. Yeah, so, Sabah cannot be a one-man show, which is uh, which is which what, is I think what it, it is. is right now, right? If we it's say Sabah is Coach Kade, it's not yeah. like we don't. I don't. I for, I kind of forget who's the vice president is. Secretary, I think is Kairizal, but he's also like not here, not there. <laughs> the rest, I have no idea. So it's always a if it's, it's always a pushing game. So it's a blaming game. Who's not doing what? Who's not doing this? It's always the old politics from back then. I'm still hearing now, which is ridiculous. I mean, it's fine if the boxers are are proud of uh, of the of the clubs that they come from. But once they are the national team, they put that all aside, and they just want to grow together and be strong. I think at the end of the day, it 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 boils down to everybody just stop thinking about themselves to a certain extent. Because True. at the end of the day, if we don't get shit together for Sabah there's not gonna be the, that next wave of boxers who actually wants to represent the sport and the sport will just die off eventually yeah to be honest I don't know who's next after Coach Kade to take over Sabah I don't see anybody reliable enough or knowledgeable enough or who knows what to do to me right now it's not even a matter of being reliable em- enough let's just get somebody different in there try his ideas and if it doesn't work out then we try someone else you just throw all the balls until one of them stick you know what I mean I don't think we can go any lower than this other than shutting it down completely which is going to be a big shame it'll be sad it'll be sad yes of course definitely it will be sad but at the same time I think people should stop being selfish to an extent yeah, I think there's enough boxers. There's enough former boxers. There's enough amateur boxers. There's yeah, enough definitely. Yeah, whatever boxers to actually come together and try to sort this out. Because at the end of the day, what what bothers me most about this is that all this old politics, right? He said, she said, whatever. Those people don't suffer. It's the athletes who suffer. Yeah, it's the Leonas who suffer. It's the sorry, Leona. Leona. Uh, <laughs> It's the Chia Wei's who suffer. It's people who are like that, who actually pour their hard work, sweat, blood, whatever, money. Tears. Sweat. Tears. Money. More money. Their own money. And they're getting nothing out of it that 
actually bothers me the most and we mm. are actually not doing anything for future boxes that bothers me how would you fix it let's just sum it up how would you fix it right now like i said i will go in speak with sports singapore speak with coach kade call all the gym owners to come down and sit together we we rebuild the co- the committee uh, make it neutral then we do a proper selection again where all the boxers will come even though you're already in the team you go through the selections all over again if you're selected uh, you get a formal letter to say you are you are accepted to train the national team you have certain guidelines to follow you fail that or you lose or you don't stick with the the certain attitude or certain like, attendance that we expect then you will get kicked out because now right now I feel like people can just come in and go and they know the association still needs them Mm. So if they know that they might get kicked out or something like that, then they take a bit more pride. Let's let's make Singapore boxing great again, guys. I'm just pleading with you guys right now. Yep. I think the future of the sport depends on us or whoever is in the sport. Yeah, if you want to see a change, we have to be the change, right? Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah. Yeah. So on that somber note, I mean, we're going to do this once in a while where there will be issues where we need to address, where we feel like we need to be the authority. authority. Well, he's the authority in the ring, obviously, with all the belts that he has that he never wears, by the way. Uh, so, yeah, I don't. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't wear belts. I don't know why. He has so many of them. Uh, things that needs to be addressed, we will address it. It's kind of painful to talk about it. Mm-hmm. We're going to step on people's toes. Uh, but honestly... I don't see how things can get worse. So if you want to join in the conversation, uh, link up with us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Uh, check out the One Man Show on Spotify. This is not going to happen that often. Uh, but again, set aside all the egos. Let's make amateur boxing great again. You know, so yes, great please. that there will be someone who actually goes to the SEA Games three times and win A bronze goal. all three times. <laughs> You know, at least give him a chance to win bronze all three times. Uh, and yeah, I think a massive shout out to Sazali. Yeah, Sazali of Straits Times. For bringing this into light. Uh, I think it's great work that he's doing uh, to actually wake people up from this stupid slumber of ego, greed, and... Uh, Ignorance. Yeah, don't be butthurt, guys. At the end of the day, we're just in this together, so... Yeah, that's it from us. Peace. Like now, we don't even have a structure to like go somewhere. So I think that's the main concern right now.